Okay, so we're gonna learn how to hold the bow. Yay. <laughs> so if you could uh, just shake your right hand and now just uh, hold your bow up and place your hand on the pencil. I mean, hold your pencil up and place, <laughs> place your hand on the pencil. Any way you meant. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Just, just any way. I want to see how you do it. Okay, good. All right. So, not bad. So what you want to do is you want your fingers to hang over the pencil a little bit more and you want a little bit more space between your fingers. Oh, okay. That's good. like space where? Yeah. No, that's really good. And you naturally put your thumb in the right place, which is where you Oh, I knew that. Is. Okay, good. You, you already I knew, knew that. that. Okay. And that feels natural to me, too. Good. So. And, and your fingers are already naturally curved. You're not stretching them out and uh, creating tension with your hand. So the w reason I like to do this with a pencil first is because it's a lot more natural. A lot of mm -hmm. students, if they start with the bow, they want to grab the bow, you know? So remember that, and now let's grab the bow. Okay. So we're grabbing the bow with the left hand, and we're holding it up, we're shaking our hand, right hand, and then we're placing it on the bow. I don't know where exactly to put it. Okay, so you're going to put your thumb... Yeah, so just leave it right there, and I'll, I'll adjust it. Uh, yes, so your thumb goes in this little ridge here, which it okay. already is. Um, so this uh, circle, that's where your middle finger goes. Yeah, so that that will show you how how far to hang your fingers down. And then, yeah, so next you place, um, actually, I'm sorry, this is where your ring finger goes because your thumb and your middle finger are gonna touch. Oh! Yes, and then your pinky is on top of the stick and your, your index finger is the last one that just curls around the stick. Do you see this okay. joint here, the second joint? That's the one that rests on the stick. Oh! Yeah. So now what's important to know about the bow is that it weighs differently down here at the frog than it does at the tip. So what, what you're getting when you're, when you're holding the bow with just your right hand, you're getting more of the natural frog weight. Now, if you hold the tip of the bow with your left hand, you're getting more of what it weighs at the tip. So mm -hmm. uh, how that affects the hold is that when you um, move towards the tip, since it weighs less, you're going to need to uh, turn your hand over to the left, oh. much like turning a doorknob, uh, opening a doorknob and closing. So it's as if you're closing the doorknob because you're going to need your index finger, this joint that I just talked about, to rest and be able to put a little bit of pressure down to bend the stick a little bit. Oh, okay. That way we can have the same sound at the tip than we have at the frog. Now, okay, like now, the pressure will be the same. Exactly, okay. and when you're moving towards the frog, what you're gonna notice is that your index finger is no longer resting on the stick, but you're actually opening the doorknob, so the balance of the hand is now resting on the pinky. Yeah, so you have to adjust your hand position depending on where you are. It's Think important pinky to not. Right, it's like. important to, <laughs> to have it be very uh, curved and, and not straight. Now, a couple of exercises that I like to do with my students. Uh, one of them is called the spider exercise. So you hold your bow, yes, in a vertical position, and then you move up with your hand using just your right hand and going up is easier than coming back down oh gosh yes i'm just warning you right now this is already pretty difficult <laughs> like how did you do that so fast <laughs> no no trying yeah do you have to have your fingers in the right position no <laughs> okay. you just it's all about balance and finger control okay yeah. Oh, see, you're doing well. See, that's good. 
like pinching it between my pinky and ring finger. <laughs> well, ideally, you won't be touching the bow hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah, so that's just going to train your fingers to be m looser and more, more mobile, oh, I like more flexible. That. Yeah. The other one is called the windshield wiper exercise. So you want to move your bow as if it's a windshield wiper. So first you start with all of the fingers and you just move it in that direction with all of the fingers holding. That's right. Now the next thing you do is you lift your index finger off of the bow and you do it without the index finger. <laughs> Good. Now lift your middle finger. Yeah. So the idea is that that you'll more of the weight will be on your pinky and your pinky is going to be controlling mm. the direction of the bow. Yeah. That's it's building pinky strength which you'll need for playing at the frog. It's so hard to do without the other fingers. I know. And then the last one, you take the ring finger off. Yeah. And then you're not doing a full-on windshield wiper. You're just kind of moving it up and down. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to balance. It. Yeah. So oh, do you see where my, where my pinky is? Now the... Can I just pull it off? Sure. Yeah. If you is pull it bad? right from the... Ideally, you should cut the... Should I just leave it? Yeah. Well, we'll cut it later. Okay. <laughs> So some bows are round, uh, totally all around, but some oh. of them uh, have um, are octagonal. So then the inner yours is round, but is it octagonal here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's because uh, your pinky should be in the inner, uh, on the inner side. Oh, I see what you're talking. Yeah. About. So try that and see if that helps. I don't know if it's like. Okay. Oh, Good. Actually. Does it give you more balance? Good. Well, there you go. Yeah, so one finger... There needed to be something pushing that way. Yeah, one finger at a time off. Don't try to take multiple oh. ones at once. Yeah, and just keep... Exactly, keep steering it with the pinky up and down. Yeah. Now take the middle finger off. <laughs> this, like, actually requires strength. Right? There you go. Yeah. Now the ring finger. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, you can practice. Cool. <laughs> Good. Okay. So you can practice this at home. And uh, the next thing I would have my students do is, is play open strings. And also, to, uh, much like the left arm the right arm also has its arm levels so for the g string you uh, yeah it would be up here and then d down a down and e even lower so so you don't hit the strings exactly at the same time. and most beginner students hit strings all the time that yeah. they're not supposed to yeah well, have to constantly sounds remind. beautiful <laughs> <laughs> oh another thing i have to constantly remind them of is this is how you draw the bow. You move your forearm and keep your upper arm not moving because that way, let me actually get my violin and I'll show you. Um, because what happens is if you move your upper arm, you can move your upper arm at the frog, but if you move it any other time, look at what my bow does. <laughs> And, oh yeah, and I had those. That's a big it's not thing. Perpendicular anymore. Exactly, exactly. So, so you want to always have that angle of the. This is a square at the middle, and then here it should be straight. Your arm should be straight, and then here it's a triangle at the frog. So triangle, square, and then straight at the tip. Yeah, I I feel like I always watch violin players wrists when they're yeah. doing that yeah because like their hands like going like that and I'm like hands can do that 
Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and most students, when they start off, they're grabbing the bow and they don't have any of that wrist mobility. So the wrist is helpful to guide you towards the frog. But you don't want a high wrist all the time because then look at what happens yeah. with my bow. <laughs> yeah, so it's important when you're starting out to just always have flat hair and play at the middle between the fingerboard and the bridge. And what I like to teach my students is if they have a mirror and the mm -hmm. mirror is over here, they can be looking at the mirror while they're mm -hmm. drawing the bow to make sure it's straight. And that way they'll learn how to adjust if they need to adjust their arm angle or their hand angle. There are many things that you need to adjust and the only way that you'll learn is by having a mirror and mm -hmm. trying different things. Cool. All right. Any questions? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.